we knew, not we, I didn't know, it was decided that Barry and Paul were kind of in their roles. We kind of knew who they were going to be playing as Ninja Turtles. However, as I understand it, you guys were kind of a little, it wasn't, it wasn't a given that you were going to be Leonardo and Michelangelo, is that correct? It is correct, yeah. We were at the... Uh, Spark for life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were at our first recording session in a little studio in Burbank, California in 1980, gosh, I guess early 87. And, uh, and they knew that Rob was going to be uh, Raphael, of course, and Barry was going to be Donatello, but they hadn't decided anything. I just used my own voice. Donatello. I didn't do anything. I just lifted it up a little bit to give it some view. <laughs> and that was about it. And I kind of went home and I said, gee, I want to get that part. Because yeah. it's really <laughs> freaking easy. <laughs> no, actually, I mean, I just really loved it. I, I, I liked the fact that he was a little geeky because I was a little geeky. And so um, it was, it was kind of cool. So I was really excited when I got Donna Jolly because because uh, that was a, what I wanted. That was a before. That's the guy I wanted. Well, we don't all get what we want, do we? <laughs> well, sometimes we do. <laughs> okay. Let's ask. Yeah, let's ask and answer some questions. So what is your name and what is your question? Uh, my name is Richard. Hey, Richard. Uh, Hi, so I've been a fan since the show came on when I was one years old in 87. Oh, wow. Wow. Thanks, thanks for nothing, Richard. <laughs> so, been a lifelong fan. It, it was great joy hearing and seeing you guys again in the 2012 series in those crossover episodes. But the reason I'm bringing up my age is I know it's four years away, but has there been any kind of talks or plans about what you guys might do for the 40th anniversary? Hopefully we'll get lots of more invitations. Yeah, uh, right in a float on some parade. Or maybe something. right now I think. And maybe on a walker. That's my ambition. <laughs> I think the biggest plans we have is to be breathing. <laughs> walking up right Turtles live a long time, but not as long as we'd like. Uh, I don't know. That, that's an interesting question, Richard. However, never say never. This franchise. Thanks to you guys. And that's not hyperbole. Yeah. We know who butters our pizza. And <laughs> it's absolutely, you know, without question. You know, we've all worked on a number of shows and we think, oh my God, I'm going to buy some stock in a toy company. This is going to be huge, you know, and then crickets. And you, you just know that you never know. So we have already won the lottery, Richard. I don't know. They might. Nickelodeon has been really a good steward of this franchise. They are, they're killing it. I know that the original stuff is back on Nickelodeon now, right? And Paramount Plus and Pluto. Yeah. And, yeah. So you don't know. Um, but boy. Who do we talk to? <laughs> I just hope there's cake. <laughs> but if we do, man. We'll let you know. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. Good job. Good question. Hello, what is your name? Dustin. Dustin, what's your question? Uh, I wanted it. Your Ninja Turtles weapons were your favorite weapons? Well, well I'll tell you, uh, nun nunchuck, uh, nunchucks were deadly in my hands. So uh, <laughs> I'd be knocking myself out every two seconds. <laughs> I just gave you these weapons. So try these on for size. Oh. That's, that's, Again, guys, no, don't indulge to this. Sorry. <laughs> I, I actually, honestly, I was not that aware of the whole uh, ninja ethos. I mean, I didn't really know about the three-pronged thing. We learned an awful lot. Um, my son, like I think probably a lot of you, was inspired to get into martial arts because his old man was a turtle. That was pretty cool. Yeah. How about oh, you, Cam? My favorite weapon is a hair dryer. <laughs> Well, actually, what I learned was um, the bow is really the weapon of choice in the video games because it has the range. Everyone tells me that. Not that I've ever played the video game, but but I've actually now I have downloaded the new Shredder's Revenge onto my iPad. And, um, was like that game, huh? And it's great. That was such a gift. My son, as I mentioned, is in the video game business. And he was at PAX East, 
couple years ago, the big video game. <coughs> and he knew that we had done this game, but he called me up because they had just released these. He said, Dan, these guys are freaking out because they, they recognize your voices. And it was really interesting to, to see that reaction all those years later because obviously there have been another, another, a number of different iterations, movies, games, whatever, that don't use us. And it's also a really good lesson because it's not about us. We don't draw them, we don't write them. We're a big part of it, but not everything. However, when folks grew up and they hear us in a game, it was a connection that we had no idea was so profound. It's crazy. That's right. After all these years and all the video games that have come out, most of which didn't have voices, but this is the first video game where they actually used us original voices on it. So that was a real treat for us, and apparently a, a treat for fans as well. Absolutely.